Masters like Haydn, Mendelssohn, and Schumann wrote not for the grand piano, but for a much smaller instrument. Meet the Trondlin Forte piano. It's one of only 15 or so left in the world. This one lives at the Orange Johnson House in Worthington. Money has finally come together to fully restore it, a 16-month process. The last time I tuned it, when everything was working, was in 2005. And every, every time I tuned it, something mechanical started to fail. So it's somewhat like a violin or any, like a Stradivarius or something. It needs to be played and it needs to be in condition to be played yes. in order to survive. Right. The instrument had been acquired in Europe. The owner of the instrument had had it strung with modern piano wire. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. If anybody had actually tried to play it, it might have imploded because yes. of the strength of the wire that was yeah. in it. Yes. The strength of the wire was based on a cast iron plate. Cast her that way. Turn this one this way. It was an instrument that I'd never heard of. So I was curious, number one. Okay, so who was this builder and just how good was his stuff? And it didn't take long to investigate the, between the key work um, and the, uh, the case work, the design of the case and the, the material that was used in the veneer, uh, the cabinet work, uh, that this is something really worth restoring and not being made into a desk. The belly of the instrument. The belly on these instruments uh, is all the more significant because there's no cast iron plate holding the thing together. And so one, one assessment that I have to make is just how bad is the damage. If I bring tension back to the case, I don't want it to be any more destructive uh, than it has been. The inner workings of the action is actually, in my view, probably the most critical. Even if the belly isn't fully repaired, uh, tone may suffer, um, but the part that is unseen in the instrument, that really makes the piano or not. So as a restorer, I'm looking at what's there. Um, I want to make it I want to make all the specifications as close as I can to what was there originally, but in as much as possible, leave the original material there as a document that can be studied later on. And it's a conversation that you can have with artists and craftsmen from, from years ago. And, and it's a conversation that fewer and fewer people are speaking. So I feel like it's a, uh, it's a language that's being lost unless someone keeps the language alive. The very first notes came when David Brightman, Oberlin's Director of Historical Performance, stepped into the studio to record a fundraising CD to benefit the Worthington Historical Society. The first concert was staged recently at the Orange Johnson House. And it's like um, going back to the source somewhere, yes. The source of um, what the composers heard and imagined. It's very important to, uh, to play such piano because it enlightens uh, about the intentions and, uh, of the composers. The touch is very shallow. When you play a key, it descends to about half the depth of a modern instrument. So it's very easy to play. It makes some things in the literature which are nearly impossible to play on a modern instrument possible. <laughs> 